In 1815, somewhere in the sprawling archipelago of Indonesia, a quiet mountain prepared to rewrite human history. Tambora was not widely known beyond the nearby islands. It was a massive volcano, yes, but it had been silent for centuries, asleep under a blanket of forests and villages that grew comfortably on its slopes. People who lived at its feet had long forgotten they were living on a giant. No one knew that deep beneath their feet, an unimaginable force was building, one that would soon reach every corner of the planet. A force that would steal summer from the world. The strange story truly begins years earlier, in 1812, when villagers first reported distant rumbles. Ground tremors shook wooden houses. Thin veils of ash dusted crops and rooftops. Birds abandoned the forest. Fishermen at sea claimed they heard cannon fire echoing across the water, though no naval battles were happening anywhere nearby. Yet after a few days the earth quieted again and people returned to their daily routines. Life resumed. The warning signs went unnoticed or rather, no one understood how to interpret them. There were no seismologists. No volcanic monitoring. No radio, no newspapers that could explain what was happening. Tambora's heartbeat was increasing, but humanity had no stethoscope to hear it. Then came early April of 1815. Smoke billowed out of the summit like a giant chimney. Small eruptions sent ash raining down over entire villages. People fled their homes, clutching children and livestock, unsure of whether to run or pray. They watched the sky turn a sickly, unnatural yellow. At night, they saw glowing embers and red sparks dancing at the top of the mountain, like the devil's own lanterns. Fear began to spread, but there was nowhere to run. The island was small, transport was limited, and the world was blissfully unaware that one of the most powerful volcanic eruptions in recorded history was only days away. On the evening of April 10, 1815, Tambora unleashed its full fury. The explosion tore through the earth with such force that sailors more than 2,000 kilometers away thought entire navies were exchanging cannon fire. Villagers reported the sky splitting open, the ground shaking so violently that it toppled stone buildings. Lava fountained into the air. Ash clouds soared nearly 40 kilometers high, so high they entered the stratosphere. Entire villages were vaporized in moments, swallowed by pyroclastic flows that moved faster than a sprinting horse. Darkness fell over the island, thick and suffocating. Even by lantern light, people could not see their own hands. The ash was so heavy that it collapsed roofs, smothered gardens and blocked rivers. The eruption reduced Tambora's height by more than 1,300 meters, carving out a massive caldera that still remains today. But the destruction at the eruption site was only the first chapter. Above the earth, the ash and sulfur released by Tambora created something far more dangerous than lava or fire. A global veil. These particles drifted into the stratosphere, where they formed a thin, reflective layer circling the entire planet. Instead of falling back down like ordinary dust, they stayed suspended for years, blocking sunlight, bending the sky into strange colors and cooling the earth. And on the planet below, people began noticing something unsettling. The seasons no longer behaved like seasons. By early 1816 it was clear that something was terribly wrong. Winter lingered unnaturally long. Spring arrived then vanished. Instead of warm breezes, icy winds cut across fields. In North America, snow fell in June. Farmers watched their crops die before their eyes. One morning in July, people woke to find frost covering their fields as if it were late autumn. Lakes froze during what should have been the height of summer. Birds collapsed mid-flight, unable to survive the sudden cold. Families gathered around fires through nights that should have been warm. Entire harvests failed. Food became scarce. People who had never known famine suddenly faced starvation. Europe plunged into its own crisis. Endless rain darkened the skies, drowning fields and destroying crops. Rivers overflowed. Wheat rotted in the ground. Farmers plowed mud rather than soil. And with food supplies running out, prices soared. Bread riots swept across the continent. In Switzerland, starving villagers gathered outside bakeries, shouting and threatening violence. Across Germany, mobs stormed grain warehouses. The wealthy locked their doors. The poor were left to choose between stealing or starving. But the disaster wasn't contained to the West. In India, the monsoon collapsed entirely, only to return with catastrophic flooding. These water disasters created stagnant pools that bred disease. A new illness emerged, cholera, and spread through rivers and trade routes, eventually becoming the first global cholera pandemic. Millions died. In China, famine struck brutally. Entire communities fled in search of food. The global climate system had been thrown into chaos and no region was safe. 
compounding all this suffering was a profound sense of fear. Imagine being alive in 1816. No modern climate science existed and the world was suddenly plunged into darkness, cold and chaos. Newspapers printed theories ranging from divine punishment to the sun losing its power. Priests reported more confessions in a week than they typically heard in a year. People gathered in churches, believing they were witnessing the end of days. They studied the sky, watching as it turned strange shades of red, orange and violet, colors caused by volcanic ash scattering sunlight, though no one understood that at the time. Animals behaved erratically. People whispered of omens and curses. In some villages, the sun was visible only as a faint, ghostly circle through the haze. Yet amid this despair, something remarkable happened in the world of art and literature. In Switzerland, that same relentless, miserable weather trapped a small group of writers inside a lakeside villa. Lord Byron, Mary Shelley, Percy Shelley, and Polidori spent the summer indoors because rainstorms and freezing temperatures made the outdoors unbearable. With nothing else to do, they held a competition. Each person would write a terrifying story. From that dark, cold, endless summer was born Frankenstein, one of the most influential novels of all time. Polidori created The Vampire, a work that laid the foundation for modern vampire fiction. Byron wrote his apocalyptic poem Darkness, directly inspired by the dim, fiery skies of Tambora's aftermath. Turner, the famous painter, documented the unusual sunsets in his works, bright red skies that seemed almost unreal but were in fact caused by volcanic particles scattering sunlight. Tambora, indirectly and unexpectedly, helped shape the future of art, literature, and the Gothic imagination. Scientists too were transformed. The strange atmospheric conditions motivated researchers to study climate, volcanic eruptions, and solar radiation in ways they never had before. Tambora's eruption became an early lesson in global climate systems. A demonstration that the actions of a single volcano could alter the planet's temperature, weather, and ecosystems. And then there was the human cost. Tens of thousands died instantly when the volcano erupted. But far more died in the years that followed, through starvation, disease, economic collapse, and environmental chaos. Entire migration patterns shifted. Families left their homelands in search of food or better climates. Some historians argue that Tambora indirectly influenced political movements, population growth in North America, and even the framing of new technologies like the bicycle, born from the shortage of horses. For years, temperatures remained abnormal. Crops struggled. Weather extremes became common. Only gradually, around 1819, did the skies clear fully and the global climate begin to stabilize. People rebuilt, replanted, and tried to forget the nightmare of the years without summer. But the memory of what happened, the fear, the hunger, the darkness, lingered for generations. Today, Tambora remains the largest volcanic eruption in over 10,000 years. Its power reminds us that humanity, for all its progress, remains incredibly vulnerable to the forces of nature. The eruption showed how interconnected our world truly is, how a blast on a remote island can change the fate of nations, alter art and science, collapse economies and shift climate patterns across the globe. Tambora did not just end a summer. It ended stability. It reshaped human history. It forced the world to confront the terrifying reality that our planet can change in an instant. And it left behind a warning written not in words, but in ash that nature is vast, unpredictable, and capable of rewriting the story of humanity with a single eruption.